Good morning. Happy spring. I'm Mary Corrado from Mary Corrado Interiors. And since it's spring, let's work on creating some fresh new pots for maybe some indoor plants, maybe from outdoor plants, maybe for little gifts for friends. I'm going to show different ways to take an outdated pot or a plain little container and freshen it up, give it a new look and make it ready for spring. Now, to get started, I'm gonna turn the camera down and I'll show you. And while I am setting up, please come on, say hi, tell us where you're from. If you share the video with three friends, your name will go into a drawing to possibly win one of the Amy Howard products I'm using today. So, the first technique I wanna show you is using Amy Howard's Zinc Antiquing Solution. Applied the antiquing solution all, all over and we will let this dry. And then when we come back, if there's any little spots that you miss or you wanna redo, you can do another layer of the solution. So that is how to antique a galvanized pot. And we'll come back and finish that once it's dry. The next thing I wanna show you is how to take a terracotta pot that is raw. This has also been washed and it's not brand new, but I did wash it and I clean slated it so that it is ready to accept milk paint. Now, to do this process, we want to get our Toscana milk paint. This is Strasbourg white. We are just going to add a little bit to our cup. And then we add equal parts warm tap water. Start with some of the water to get it into a good paste. You just want to really get this incorporated. All the dry powder incorporated, it will be grainy, but that's what milk paint does. So do your best to really stir it up and get the granules to dissolve. So now we have our bit of milk paint and we are going to take our seawool sponge and we are going to moisten this in water, make it nice and soft, just use a nice flat area. We are going to dip into our milk paint, kind of stir it around, get it on our sponge and we are just going to to our terracotta. Just like that. Because it is milk paint, you must seal it. It is just a water-based and it would run off if you didn't. So go ahead, get it all over your surface. And we are going to let this dry. I will dry it quickly with a blow dryer so that I can go to the next step and show you. So we're gonna grab another Seawool sponge. I'm gonna dip it in my water, to soften it up. And I'm going to next use Amy Howard's Antiquing Glaze. So let's give it a shake. We're gonna pour some in our cup. And now we are going to dip into the antiquing glaze. And we're going to start taking off some of the 
milk paint. This will help just give it that look of being out in the elements a bit. Doesn't have to be pristine. You want it to look worn and weathered. Can rub back as much or as little as you would like. Just kind of grab at it. You don't you don't have to rub, but you just sort of lay lay the sponge down on it and kind of just kind of rotate. Pick up what you can. Okay. I'm going to let this dry and we'll go from there. It's looking really good. Love it. Love it. Now what we're going to do is make it look a little mossy. So that's another step with, with uh, milk paint. And this time I am going to use topiary milk paint. So you always just grab another cup. You just need a little tiny bit. Again, one-to-one -one with warm tap water. Then we will sponge this on to give it the look of it being outside and maybe have a little bit of moss growing on it. There's my little sponge. And then we will it into the milk paint. And just add it mostly at the bottom. Just kind of do what you think feels right. Let's dry this up. Okay, now, like I said, we must seal this, but before that, I think what I wanna do is I am going to do a stencil on this. I think just for the fun of it, let's add a little something to it. And let's see how it goes. So I've got some great stencils from Amy Howard. She's got, um, just these sweet little French uh, flower markets kind of things. And I just think this would be really cute if we wanted to add just a little something. So let me show you how to do that. You just peel it. They are adhesive, they are mesh, and they're really awesome. They work really easily. So all you have to do is peel the backing off, apply it, to the surface, burnish it down well, and let's give it a shot. I've got some Amy Howard, a Maker Studio chalk art. This is a green chalk art, and I think I'm going to use that on this one so it shows up. It's called Boxwood Topiary. So all you have to do is take one of Amy's applicators, dip in. It's a thick gel art, which is awesome. And we're just gonna go over like uh, silk screen printing. I 
just press it in. Let's see how this will work. This is a bumpy surface, so this will be fun to see how it turns out. And you know what, if it's a little rustic, that's even better because it's supposed to be kind of a rustic little pot, right? Okay. There we go. How cute is that? Love it. So cute. Okay, so we'll let this dry and we will then put a matte sealer over the whole thing. The blow dryer lets it dry very, very quickly. So here we have our little pot. Let's put our matte sealer on there and we will be ready to plant. Let me get the matte sealer. I'm going to use a foam brush. Let's open this up. And let's seal our little pot. everything's dry it just goes on perfectly this will dry beautifully flat which is what we want and it will dry clear okay we'll let that dry and we're gonna move on to the next little technique. Another pot idea is taking something that maybe you have, this is a cute little wall mounted planter. So what you can do with this is you take your pot as is, use your clean slate with a clean rag. We are going to clean this to get any residue or maybe waxes or oils or dirt, whatever's on it. So just wipe everything, uh, everything down, your whole surface. And then we wanna make sure it dries before we start painting. So what you need to do is you need to get one step paint as your base coat. So let's do that. So I have Amy Howard's Bauhaus buff. We're going to put a coat of this over the entire piece. I'm gonna pour some in a cup. And it's a little thick, so I am going to add just a touch of water. And for one step, I have the most success when I use Amy's uh, syn synthetic brushes. Where with milk paint, it works best if you use a chip brush or a sponge. So just paint away. Amy Howard's chalk paint smells amazing it is such a beautiful paint it's no vocs everything is water-based it's scented and it smells like slightly floral it's just lovely and it goes on so well let's get this dried up okay for the sake of the video I am rushing the process a little tiny bit, but I'm going to, again, add one more coat and then we'll be ready to finish this up. Okay, we've got two coats, we are dry, and now I'm going to add a stencil to this one. And this one I thought would be fun to go a little more kind of contemporary on it. So I am going to use Amy's wood grain stencil. 
it's such a fun stencil. I love this. And it's kind of hard to see because there you go. There you go. So. And we're just going to, this does have a sticky back, so it will, should press on pretty nicely. So just kind of give it a good press, a good burnish. This one is Together Forever. It's a slightly lighter green than the one I used for the Boxwood Topiary. Okay. Same process, just use your little applicator. I think I'll use the bigger end this time. So go ahead and dip in. It's very thick, it will just stick right to it and just start screen printing. Just pull it through the mesh. Keep it nice and flat. Oops. This too will need to be sealed with some matte sealer because if you have anything wet in the container, this will come right off. The water can take it right off. It's all water-based. So let's see how this worked. Cute is that? So you want to get these washed out pretty quickly because you don't want them to clog. Um, so go ahead and stick these in a water bath. I'll be right back. Okay. Again, we need matte sealer. Let's get that brushed on. that will protect. Okay, that one's done too. Now, back to the galvanized little bucket. These are super cute on their own, or these two can be stenciled. Let's stencil with one step. Now, the one thing you do need to realize if you're stenciling with one step is that you must rinse these stencils right away because the one step will get into the mesh and it will dry and it will ruin your stencil. Okay, give this a good burnish. One step is a little thinner. So to keep it from bleeding underneath, let's really burnish this down. Okay. Just like before. See how this does. Now remember, if this doesn't work for you, all you have to do, now first put this in your water bath, but all you have to do is rinse it off. But how cute is that? So cute. Okay, we're gonna dry this, we're gonna wax it, and then we are done. Because this is one-step paint, 
we can just go over the whole thing with wax. We do want to wax to seal the antique zinc. So if it were chalk art, then you would want to put a matte sealer on it, but we don't have to. So let's grab our light antiquing wax. Let's grab a brush for the light wax. Offload it. And then wax. I have shown you several different ways to get ready for spring. Get fresh flowers in your house. Have some fun. Gifts for friends that you've made yourself. And I think we're ready for spring. And that's all you need to do. Ready to go. This has dried. We're ready to plant. And our sweet little terracotta is ready for a plant also. So I hope I gave you some good ideas, at least to kind of get you thinking about it. Take a look in your cupboard. Do you have anything that's like, mm, I could refresh that. Lots of different ways to do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Happy spring, everyone. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.